Well, in today's video, as you can see, we have to talk about the tropics in a very, very big way because we have a 50% chance of development. That's right. We have climbed by over 40% in chance of development here on the two day outlook. And now we have our first code orange, at least I think it is of the season. So very, very exciting stuff. Very, very important stuff to go over here and really just a sign of the time of year that we're moving into, which it's very fitting that this is happening on June 1st as that is the first day of meteorological summer. So congratulations, we made it. It's summer, officially. Well, unless you're more of a calendar seasons type of person, but us weather people almost always go by the meteorological seasons, which would be again, June 1st, September 1st, December 1st, and... March 1st. Yeah, March 1st. So that happens to be my birthday, actually. So first day of spring. Anyway, that's enough rambling on. Let's get into things. You can check out my trilogy maps in the description and pinned comment down below, by the way, but we're not going to talk about that today. They are extremely high definition, though, and very, very customizable. So go ahead and check those out for weather maps today. I have to mention that, but let's get into things. And again, 50% chance of development here. And we're not going to get into too many spoilers, but as you can see, as we get into the seven day outlook, it's also a 50% chance. So it's basically the same here through the next seven days as it is through the next 48 hours. So a lot of today's video is going to be focused on really just figuring out where this is going to go. Um, and the percent chance of development has gone up significantly. So it's much, much more of a kind of where and when as if, you know, more than it is an if at this point, when yesterday it was a big if and it's moved into more of the uh, moving towards more probable than not territory in a very, very quick hurry here. So we need to talk about this uh, a lot here. Let's just move on and take a look at our European model here. As you can see, we do see that area of kind of disturbance here offshore of Florida. So we're actually going to track this um, and just see where this heads. It looks to kind of hang around, but it does look like it's going to head relatively just in a southerly direction. But as you can see, this is by the time we're taking a look at Saturday, June 3rd. We still have a lot of this activity in here. And I would not be surprised if Florida does see direct impacts from this. Now, obviously, we don't expect this to become a major hurricane or anything, but it is a tropical disturbance. This would come with some, you know, downpours of rainfall, potential for flooding there, and some windy conditions. That is at least what we can anticipate with this type of an event. Now, for more clarity here, what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to take a look here, if we can, at our... I don't want to do that. I don't know why I just did that. We're going to try to see if we can see, here we go, our vorticity here. This is going to give us a really, really good picture of this. So you can see there's a lot of this vorticity. We'll actually just move this towards the southeast because that's going to make things a whole lot easier. So as you can see, it kind of hangs around and heads directly south there. So it's very close to actually the Florida Panhandle at this point. There it is right there. This is indicating quick rotation in the atmosphere. That's all this vorticity is. So, you know, obviously uh, tropical systems are rotating storms. So when you see a lot of this in a very a kind of uh, very, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, potent area there, there it is. The red and the pink there, that's gonna be very potent areas of this, of this rotation, very strong areas. And that's gonna be very, very indicative of tropical development. So I'm actually going to have to move us towards the Caribbean here overall. Actually, we'll do the Gulf of Mexico. I'm just all over the place today, and I let's just keep going. And as you can see, this heads pretty much directly south towards Cuba, and then maybe wants to pull up northward. But you could see these impacts here, some wind and some tropical activity there in southern Florida, like I mentioned, more like Saturday time frame. So that is going to be something to watch. And it's pretty much said and done by that point. Um, I'm just waiting to see if there's any more signs of tropical development on this entire model run. And there really isn't. Um, I am watching this by just Sunday and, and uh, Monday. That's the 4th and the 5th. We can see an area of potential cyclonic uh, uh, kind of vorticity here. I guess that's exactly what this is. So uh, definitely some rotation happening in here offshore of the west coast of Florida again. But, you know, that's a little... A little uh, far in advance here. I really want to focus on this primarily. And it seems like it's going to head directly south, but it's hard to say for certain there. It could pull a little bit more east. And certainly the jet stream is a little bit favorable of that as we have kind of a, a southeast to north or a southwest to northeast flow here. The jet stream is doing something like this. 
And, you know, tropical systems don't always obey what these kind of jet streams are doing, and it could totally just move against it. But there is that chance that it kind of pulls with it a little bit more, and there would be even more impacts to Florida there. Now, I just want to focus in on this for just a few more minutes, and then we'll get in through the, just the entire overall pattern. But here's the total rainfall, like, through the weekend. And as you can see, one to maybe even three inches or more here for southern Florida cannot be ruled out. And we're also going to take a look here at our uh, wind gust swath here that's going to be accumulated. So we can see the maximum wind gusts at any point. And as you can see, 20, 30 mile per hour wind gusts can't be ruled out. And that's pretty much for the entire state of Florida here. Um, so nothing major at all, obviously, for these ships out to sea here in this area. There is 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts, maybe even a little bit higher than 40. So it gets a little bit more impactful over water, over the heart of this storm. But it doesn't seem like these will be too bad over Florida. It's mostly just going to be windy in general. Nothing damaging, hopefully, of course. But that is the expectation at this point. Anyway, I think we've focused on this tropical system enough by this point. So I want to move us back to the United States, back to this map. And we're just going to roll through with it. So tropical concerns aside, uh, we do see mm, a lot of flaring of storms. This is as we're reaching the weekend. And we can still see these storms just flaring up for the Rockies and for the Plains. And this is a common trend. I mean, even as we head towards midweek, it's relatively dry here for most of the east. And then we see this kind of area in here that's seeing this more consistent precipitation day over day over day. And that just doesn't look to stop anytime soon. I mean, even as we're heading towards the next weekend, so a full week from that first frame we took a look at, and we're still seeing this area dealing with these consistent thunderstorms. The interesting thing, we have a little bit more of an organized pocket here over Texas and Oklahoma, potentially watching for some severe weather in there, of course. And then again, we have this kind of plethora of activity here over Florida and the Gulf and some of the Caribbean. And that's going to be cause for some concern for some weak tropical development, again, like we're seeing over the next couple of days. We could be seeing more of that type of activity as we head towards the midpoint of the month. We're in a very favorable jet stream pattern as things are just moving like this across most of the south central, the southeast, and the south uh, of, of the Gulf and even portions of the Caribbean there. This is going to be pretty favorable for a lot of precipitation rising up and trying to move towards that southeast offshore region here. This is pretty textbook stuff for tropical development in the month of June, and oftentimes you'll see uh, tropical systems move more in a nor'easter type direction, and that could be something that we would be watching for. All speculation, of course, but just taking a look historically, that is a more common tropical development path, and this looks pretty textbook to me, like I said, so definitely we're going to be on the watch out for that, of course. Total precipitation, again, I mean, really nothing much happening here in the east overall. It's mostly this Rockies and Plains corridor, where there's just this massive surge of storms that just happens every single day. It's crazy, crazy stuff here we're taking a look at. Total snowfall doesn't look too much different. Actually, maybe more, if anything, than yesterday. Still dealing with a foot plus for some of these mountaintops out here. This year, Nevada is looking at maybe one to two feet of snowfall. So winter is not done yet. Um, we're going to just take a look at this until it's literally gone. Uh, so we're just going to be taking a brief look at this every day. Now, the temperature pattern, the interesting thing is we do move in, into this kind of warmer pattern in the east. It's outside of the east coast because we do have just these cool, dreary conditions uh, that t are kind of really just sitting in tight. And we've seen this for the final week of May. And this looks to continue through the, fi or the first week of June here. People have been making jokes, actually, I saw this on Facebook this morning in Virginia. They're calling Virginia the new Seattle based on the weather we've had. I mean, 60s and rainy in uh, May into June is absolutely unheard of. Uh, people are wearing long sleeve uh, shirts. It's just absolutely insanely cold weather for this time of year. Feels a lot more like October or even no November sometimes feels like this. But we're in a summer month. We're in meteorological summer, so... Maybe a sign of things to come. Maybe we're, we have a cooler year ahead, cooler fall, cooler winter. Over the coming weeks, we will be talking more about the fall as we will be doing kind of what we used to do years ago. Um, this is kind of just a random placement of an announcement, but I want to be doing fall forecasts and eventually winter forecasts at least three times a year. So what we used to do is we do our preliminary fall forecast in June, the second one in July, and the final one in August, and then we're actually moving into fall after that point, so September, October, November. Um, and then September is, is the winter forecast, 
and then October, and then November is the final one. Again, December, the first spring forecast, etc. So the first month we do the preliminary, second month we do the second, and then final month before the upcoming season, we do that final forecast, official forecast. And that is what I want to do. So you'll be looking out for our first fall forecast this month, which excites some of us that always look forward to the cooler seasons. I just love fall overall. I mean, corn mazes, bonfires, uh, pumpkins. I, I don't know. There's something about it that just gets me so excited. Um, I don't know. I just love it. Let me know if you feel the same, but I can just smell it right now. I can feel it right now. And I'm already looking forward to it. And it hasn't even fully moved into summer like weather at all yet. But I always look forward to it. So I am excited for those videos. Anyway, I feel like I've talked enough about that. But I am excited to talk more about that. As we move in, we can see things get warmer for a period of time here. And it finally reaches the east. And we do actually have a negative PNA bubble right here that should encourage warmer air into here. And it does for most of the time. Uh, but as you can see, after we move through the 12th and towards the middle point of the portion of the month, excuse me, uh, we could see that there is actually still a negative PNA, but we do see cooler temperatures moving down into the eastern states here. So definitely something to watch very closely. It doesn't seem like this cool, dreary weather wants to really end anytime soon, although there is some signs of some hotter days and definitely 90s on some of these days for the east, especially here as we approach more of like this kind of 8th through 10th time frame. Uh, this looks especially warm, especially if you're inland here, as you can see. Uh, most areas along the coast are near normal or below normal. It's these areas here that would be dealing with the, the heat wave that we've talked about in previous videos. It's just a roller coaster, and we don't have a clear-cut pattern yet. Uh, I do think that this is going to be a cooler month overall, just based on uh, what we've seen here. Uh, this definitely, definitely is uh, a very interesting pattern we've been in. Um, so for the coast, it's going to be very different than it is for areas just, you know, a couple hundred miles inland where we do anticipate a warmer month. I mean, look at the Ohio Valley and, and these areas. This is where we talked about in our June forecast, most of the warmth being. And as you can see out west, we've stayed consistently cold out here as well, where our June forecast is calling for cooler temps. So it is um, basically on par with what we were thinking, but it's this coastal area, northeast area that really wants to hold on to that cool air. That's the number one area I'm looking for my forecast to potentially be wrong for June, just based on these cooler temps we've had and, and, and expect to have based on this. Very interesting stuff. Anyway, I don't know why this video has gone so long, and I've been so excited to talk about everything I've talked about today. I feel very happy. I don't know why. I'm happy about it, but I don't know why. Uh, but I got to end it. It's going to go forever if I just keep going on like this. So be sure to check out those trilogy maps in the pinned comment and description like I mentioned before. You can subscribe for daily videos like this, even the fall forecast coming up, eventually the winter forecasts, all of that fun stuff we're going to be doing very, very soon. So be sure to subscribe to those daily uploads. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video.